He's too warm and wants to squeeze me. <laughs> well, you know, if you drink half of each, you can mix them. Yeah. Spread apart and four spread apart. Really? Mm -hmm. We are more like.
Good afternoon, and welcome to Wayne Presbyterian Church. It's so wonderful to see all of you here this afternoon. My name is Katie Schiebel. I'm one of the associate pastors here, um, and I'm so delighted to be able to welcome you to this concert, this wonderful afternoon of music on this gorgeous day. Just a few housekeeping notes. We have bathrooms located right outside this door. I invite you to take a moment to silence any electronic devices that you may have, phones, etc., so we can all enjoy the concert together. If you have any questions about our church, about our facilities, you're welcome to find me. I'll be sitting right here in the front or one of our very friendly ushers who are located on either um, side of the doors here. One of our traditions here at Wayne is we tend to open our concerts with prayer since we are in a church, so I invite you to join me in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this time that we are about to spend together. We ask for your blessings upon this afternoon, this concert. We ask you to bless the countless hours of practice time that these musicians have offered up to you so that they can share this gift of music with us this afternoon. Holy God, as we come together into this space, may we quiet our minds, enjoy this time together, and may this time of music be all for your glory. In your name we pray. Amen. And now without further ado, I'd like to introduce the Whirlwind Quintet. <laughs> the World Wind Wind Quintet, and um, I want to introduce the players. Is this on? No. There we go. No. Nope. Okay. So, now that we have your attention, as I said, um, I want to introduce the Woodwind Quintet that we have here. Uh, Jerry Greenfield on, Geraldine Greenfield on clarinet, Don Greenfield, her husband, on bassoon, Jane Murray on horn, and Katrina Nisley on oboe, and I'm the flute player John Kaufman. I should mention that when we formed this woodwind quintet, we formed it with an oboe player that was a member of this church, Ernie Baker. Some of you may remember him. Uh, he and his family moved to North Carolina to be close to his relatives down there in retirement, and um, so we had to find another oboe, 
And so we found Katrina last year, and she's worked in very nicely. In fact, she immediately reduced the average age of this quintet quite substantially. <laughs> so anyway, um, we, uh, we, we're going to do a mixture of program, programming today, mostly 20th and 21st century pieces. Um, and I'm going to say a little bit before each one, but it's time to enjoy it. The first set of music that we're going to do are some dances from the 17th century. Now that I just said we're from the 20th century, but it's, it, these were put together by a 20th century composer, Frank Farkas. Thank you. 
dancing at that last one a little bit. Um, the next piece is um, by Amy Beach, a pastor owl. And I programmed this because when I heard that John Gresham was going to do an Amy Beach choral piece with the or Wayne Oratorio Society next spring, uh, I thought, well, we had one in our repertoire, I'm going to throw one in too. Um, now, Amy Beach, the interesting thing about this, I did a little trick on the program, you might want to notice, that um, 
she lived until 1944. She was married. Her husband died in 1910. Um, this piece was uh, one, her penultimate work as a composer. It was, it was uh, composed in 1941, although she started writing previous versions of it in the 20s. But uh, what was interesting to me was that on, on our score, it says composer is Mrs. H. 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 A. Beach. And then it says in parentheses, Amy Beach. So I thought, I'm going to switch it around in the program. I'm going to say Amy Beach, and then in parentheses say Mrs. H. H. A. Beach. Anyway, this is a beautiful piece. It sort of has a lilt to it. It's very calming. She thought of it as a nice sort of late summer walk in the, in the woods. And uh, so I hope you enjoy. Oh, the other reason I should say that I get up and talk a little bit is to allow our instrumentalists a little break and allow them to swab their instruments. Believe it or not, woodwinds, unlike strings, we, we have to swab them once in a while. So, and instead of me doing some soft shoe, I thought, well, I'll just say something. <laughs> are composed by uh, Paul Patterson. He wrote a, a suite called Westerly Winds, and he took a bunch of folk songs from the western part of the British uh, Isle of, of, of England. And this is our 21st century piece, by the way. Uh, arranged them for woodwind quintet. It, 
changes meters constantly, changes uh, keys constantly. So we're, we're, you'll see us switching back and forth. But the first one, as you see in the program, it's called Scrumpy Giles or Farmer Giles. We know it here in the United States as Sweet Betsy from Pike. All right? And then uh, the Lyndon Lee number is almost hymn-like in its, in its presentation. So we're doing the first and third. There's four parts. We're only doing two of the four, just to keep our concert a little short, get you out of here in time. Uh, oh, I should also say, thank goodness the Eagles are playing tomorrow night. We didn't have to, comp we didn't have to compete with them. So uh, that, that, was also, that was a big, big plus. Anyway, uh, this is by Paul Patterson, Westerly Winds.
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Joseph Kaufman, and I am uh, the artistic director of Music Transforms, which uh, supports the Cornerstone Christian Academy Orchestra in Southwest Philadelphia. It's, today is particularly special uh, because I had the great honor of welcoming the greatest musical mentor and influence in my life, um, my father, uh, John Kaufman and his friends. And uh, it's, you guys are absolutely exquisite group. And um, I remember probably about 20 years ago, uh, the first time that you guys got together to rehearse. And um, my dad was, he was just overjoyed with uh, the stuff that you guys were, were doing. And uh, he just, uh, loves playing with with all of you so so very much. Um, but today, we're here to hear this great music. But we're also here to uh, talk about uh, what this organization is uh, promoting, and and that's music education. And it's it's my strong belief that music education is one of the most important elements for children as they are uh, learning. And I think, you know, this has to do with many reasons, but one of the things that stood out to me as I've been doing research over the years was some of the different studies that they use, the EKGs and other things that they, they put on, on the head, and they studied, you know, the effects of doing math and what you know what would happen is someone would do math and this part of the brain would light up and then they would try reading and another part would start lighting up uh, they you know physical activity all these different things um, and they they tried having people listen to music and sort of the whole brain started to light up a little bit uh, just from listening to music. And then they tried playing an instrument. And the whole brain lit up like a disco ball. And it's, it's because of all the processes that happen in the brain when you're learning a musical instrument. You're reading the notes. Though you're taking in those notes, you're reading it and your brain tells this arm to do this and this arm to do this, two completely different things. And you're listening to what's coming out and while making mathematical calculations for how long to hold this note and that note. Um, and then the emotional part of your brain also, you feel something there too. Um, and I think that it's, we're able to combine everything that students learn in their other subjects, which you know, oftentimes are siloed out as, all right, we're doing math, but how does that apply to everything else in life? Uh, we're reading. Uh, when you play music, you get to combine everything together uh, and, um, and have some you know, practical use for, for some of that knowledge. Um, as many of you will notice that we, there is a, a change in the name, and we were uh, the Commonplace Orchestra. Now we're the Cornerstone Christian Academy Orchestra. Um, you know what happened was, 99% of the students that we had in our orchestra were from Cornerstone Christian Academy, and it became. Uh, easier for things to work uh, inside of that school. And uh, you have orchestra there, have lessons, have grades, you know, to give buy-in for the students. And so we're, you know, we've been uh, really thrilled to start that new adventure this fall. And we're thankful to all of you for all of your support and encouragement and donations and everything uh, to help us to give these children, 
uh, musical experience uh, to, to help, help them develop their brain, to get them off of their, their phones, off the TV, um, and you know, providing this total brain workout for students in Southwest. Thank you. To start the uh, second half of our program, we're going to do a, a short piece called Petit Fram Musicale by Nino Rota. Uh, some of you may have known the name Nino Rota. He, he wrote the music uh, score for the Godfather movies. Um, and so even though you will not hear anything like the Godfather in this piece, uh, I just thought I'd point that out. Um, we enjoy playing this piece. It's, uh, it's not, uh, nice and short, but it is challenging, but we, 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 we like it a lot, and I uh, hope you'll enjoy it, too. Uh, great.
Vincent, per uh, Vincent Persichetti, as many of you know, uh, came from Philadelphia. Uh, he was originated in Philadelphia, and then he moved up to New York and spent most of his career in New York. But he, he wrote this pastoral for Woodwind Quintet. It was one of my favorites when I heard the old recordings of the old Philadelphia Woodwind Quintet um, and, uh, I, I, from the early 60s. And this was one of my favorite pieces. So we, we learned it, and we hope you enjoy it as well.
good work by um, Malcolm Arnold. Um, Malcolm Arnold was a British composer uh, of the 20th century, sort of maybe second in line, if you will, to Benjamin Britten. That, that's not really true, but it, he, was, he was considered way up there. Um, in fact, he wrote the music score to uh, the movie Bridge on the River Kwai. Um, and, uh, but Malcolm Arnold was also sort of a rascal. Um, he, uh, but he, he was born in 1921. Um, he sort of became very rude and very offstandish in the 60s um, and uh, had, had some drinking problems and so forth. He was a real character. Well, anyway, this piece by him is three shanties. And um, the first one is basically based on the tune, What Do You Do With a Drunken Sailor? Um, and it's, it's, it really it's, it's gets boisterous and has a lot of fun to it. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you can hear some laughing in it. You had some all, all sorts of crazy uh, figures. The second movement is more or less a slow movement featuring our horn player, Jane Murray. Um, and it's sort of like, after the party, him trying to find his way back to the ship or something like that. He, he wanders around and, he, and, and he, you hear this laughter in the, in, in the middle of it here and there. You'll hear a little, little laughter in the music. And then the third moment is in the next morning. Everybody wakes up and has a big party. And so enjoy the three shanties by Malcolm Arnold.
Mr. Frog went to Corton, and it's a tradi traditional melody um, arranged by our horn player, Jane Murray, and featuring our bassoonist, Don Greenfield. One movement from Debussy's Petite Suite. I believe he wrote this originally for piano. It was then orchestrated, and now uh, uh, somebody has arranged it for woodwind quintet. And we're doing the ballet movement from that. Mm -hmm. 
introduce our last piece I just want to say we are I'm so glad to play in front of all of you today and, and our woodwind quintet is uh, we really enjoy it uh, we enjoy this series and and uh, we hope to uh, be, see you all at future concerts uh, our last piece I'm gonna have um, Don Greenfield introduce and then after we play the whole piece once we have a surprise for you so so uh, j j just be prepared for that um, so Don uh, please introduce this piece and the background to it. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, this last piece we're going to play for you uh, is pretty special for us. Uh, it's written by a, uh, a composer from the early 20th century, a uh, Jewish person from uh, Poland. His name is Josef Baer. He's not very well known today, uh, but he wrote very good music, and uh, we're uh, playing a piece from an opera that he wrote. Uh, he wrote several operas that were quite successful in his day. Unfortunately, uh, he was Jewish and he lived in the early 20th century and the Nazis uh, pro prohibited any productions of his music after, uh, after he was already on the rise. So he fled to France, lived the rest of his days in France. Uh, and it's quite sad that he didn't really uh, get any more music out on the stage. Uh, but the stuff, that we're going to, the, the stuff that we've heard about is really very good. This is from an opera called Polish Wedding. Uh, it's a very funny piece, uh, the stock kind of a situation where there's a uh, young man and a young woman, Kazimir and Sousa, who are in love with each other and want to marry, but there's an old geezer who has his eyes on Sousa and gets in the way all along. Um, Sousa is, uh, proves to be too smart for him, too clever by half, so uh, she outwits him at every turn and 
Uh, toward the end, they sing this duet called Cat's Eyes, Katzenaugen or Cat's Eyes. Uh, the gist of the uh, aria or the, or the duet is Cat's Eyes, Cat's Eyes, they sparkle through the night. Cat's Eyes, Cat's Eyes, they're, uh, they're going to drive you mad. Cat's Eyes, Cat's Eyes, watch out for them. Cat's Eyes are looking at you. And that's basically uh, her expression of how clever she is and how she is, uh, was able to outsmart the old geezer who uh, was trying to stand in, in, in the way. Um, so we enjoyed this piece so much when we heard it. Uh, I made an arrangement of it for the quintet, and we, we like to play it. We're very happy to present this to you. Thank you so much. And we, like I said, we do have a special surprise for you. We have the composer's daughter here today. Uh, Beatrice Bear is here, and she's going to do, we're going to do a reprise of what we just did. And she's going, she's a, an opera singer and has put on opera productions here in the Philadelphia area and around the world and uh, on the East Coast especially. So uh, Beatrice, welcome. And, it's, and we're going to do a short reprise as, as an encore. Thank you. Where shall I stand? Uh, wherever you want. Thank you. Thank you. 
We're going to. Way slower. Yeah. Okay. And she's standing. Anyway. Where are you? You want you don't want a mic, right? She doesn't like the mic. Anymore. Okay, have a seat, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening. And I know my papa is smiling. I just wanted to also thank John, Don and Jerry Greenfield. Don arranged this for Quintet. So grateful, John Kaufman. Fantastic flute, and the two ladies are fantastic too. I'm sorry I don't know your name, but ni nice to meet you. <laughs> and also I wanted to just dedicate this to my father's memory and his yacht side, which is the anniversary of his passing. is coming up this Thursday on the 23rd of November. So thank you for doing this in his honor. And happy Thanksgiving. Again, we thank you all for coming. Uh, there are refreshments out in the connector. Please join us. We'll join you out there shortly, and we can say hi to all of you. Thank you. Thank you.